EE is the largest mobile network operator in the United Kingdom by customer number and they were also the first network to launch 4G services here. And in the years since then they have continued to upgrade their network obviously in terms of deploying far more 4G coverage across their site portfolio to the country as well as of course adding additional spectrum to site in order to cope and provide high speeds despite rapidly rising data consumption on their network. They can continue to evolve so readily and provide excellent performance in the most dense environments thanks to their huge spectrum portfolio and in particular one of their well-known capacity bands is 2600 MHz or band 7. Recently EE started to deploy a third carrier on band 7 which bears the EARFCN of 3029. And to explain how they achieve this, first I will explain the 2600 MHz band plan and how the operators use it. Back in the 4G spectrum auctions a number of years ago, BT or British Telecommunications ended up with 2 by 15 MHz of 2600 MHz spectrum alongside 1 by 25 MHz. The latter, so the 1 by 25 MHz, is intended for time division duplex operation, so it's really the 2 by 15 MHz of BT spectrum that we are interested in for this. EE, or everything everywhere, also achieved 2 by 35 MHz of 2600 MHz spectrum. And the BT and EE, sort of in inverted commas each, spectrum is contiguous with each other, so they are situated right next to themselves, which does have a number of advantages. So it means in total, now that BT has taken over EE, that they have 50 megahertz of contiguous paired band 7 spectrum, which is a colossal amount of band 7 spectrum. And it's a colossal amount of spectrum considering that is only one of EE's 4G bands as well. If we now look at how the carriers are ordered, EE has their main band 7 carrier at EARFCN of 3350, which is a 20 MHz paired carrier block, and it exists in the highest frequency range of the 2600 MHz. And then the second band 7 carrier that EE deploys is on EARFCN of 3179. And this forms the first part of the EE purchased 2600 MHz spectrum. And then we have the BT purchase spectrum, of which there is of course 15 MHz. And this forms the EARFCN of 3029. So you can see that working from lower frequencies to higher frequencies in the 2600 MHz block, that is the 3029, then 3179, and then 3350. In total then, so we've got 50 MHz block, 50 MHz block, and then 20 MHz block, totaling 50 MHz of spectrum in both the downlink and the uplink direction, which is really a huge amount of paired FDD spectrum especially, like I say, when you consider that it's just their band 7, let alone other frequencies like band 3 and band 1, which EE do also use on their network. This does really help EE to raise the bar in terms of spectrum deployed in the UK market, as well as compared to actually many, if not most, European and other international countries in terms of deployed bandwidth because they have the 50 megahertz paired of band 7 across those three carriers but they also currently have 30 megahertz of 4G deployed on band 3 on some sites in the form of the EARFCN 1667 carrier which is 20 megahertz paired and then 1811 which is 10 megahertz paired so that's 30 megahertz so just from then band 3 and band 7 that then gives a total of 80 megahertz paired FDD spectrum 
and they also have 5 MHz of band 20 which will raise them up to 85 MHz. EE does additionally have 20 MHz paired of band 1, 2100 MHz spectrum, although I have not come across that being refarmed for 4G just yet. Although of course if that is refarmed that would then bring them up to 105 MHz paired of 4G spectrum which is an absolutely huge amount. EE does also have 4x4 MIMO technology and 256 CRAM deployed on some sites for some of the LTE frequencies and just to come up with sort of a maximum theoretical figure if 4x4 MIMO and 256 CRAM were used across the band 3 and band 7 4G portfolio the maximum theoretical speed will be over would be around 1.6 gigabits per second which is very very fast although unfortunately there are not devices on the market yet as far as I know that can support that many simultaneous streams in such a configuration although EE has achieved gigabit class 4G speeds in the past using devices like the Huawei Mate 10 Pro as well as like the Sony XZ Premium. Thanks for watching this video about EE's third band 7 carrier which has started to be deployed. Hopefully we'll be able to see it spread rapidly across EE's network in the coming months because certainly the other two band 7 carriers have been aggressively deployed across the network in order to provide for the massively increasing data demands of modern smartphones and application use cases.